Hi, this is Sarit Switzer, and welcome to the It Is Taught podcast, a podcast devoted to the teachings of Rabbi Schneir Zalman of Liadi, as recorded in his most famous work, the Tanya. My hope for this show is to make these teachings accessible and relatable to the average person, regardless of prior Jewish education or affiliation. The episodes follow the prescribed daily study portions and are meant to serve as practical lessons in how to live your life as your true self and develop an authentic and powerful relationship with your creator. I have personally experienced the effects the study of this work has had on me, and I'm excited to share what I can of this knowledge with you. So please join me on this journey of learning, self-growth, and connection with your source. Hi, and welcome to the It Is Top podcast. This is episode 246 for the 27th of Tammuz in a leap year. So if you've been following along the, the podcast lately, you may have noticed that it's been getting pretty heavy. We've been talking a lot about some pretty serious deeds. We talked about addiction. We talked about different sins that are liable for death or excision, like these really, really extreme things. And perhaps you may have thought to yourself, you know what, like, I want to get close to God and all, but basically at the end of the day, I'm not such a bad person. Okay, sure, here and there, I'm not perfect. I mess up a little bit here and there, but basically I'm fine. I don't, I've never killed anybody, God forbid. I've never committed adultery. I've never bowed down to an idol. I'm not a straight up addict. I'm not like full-fledged, you know, really addicted to some substance or anything really like in a really really severe clinical kind of way so is this really relevant to me is it do I really need to focus so much on tshuva I mean I know I want to improve myself I know I want to get better but is the intensity like the uh the urgency kind of sense of of needing to do tshuva is it still something that's really something I can relate to is it something that I need to relate to really And as we'll learn today, that yes, very much it is. Because while it's true that not all transgressions, not all sins were created equal, and there are some sins that are more severe and the ramifications for them are more severe, there's a cumulative effect involved with sins where many small sins can actually equal up into one big sin. One way to kind of like envision this is if you think about erosion, if you think about rocks or mountains which erode, which become smaller over time, where it's literally just because of wind, because wind goes across it, because little drops of water fall into it here and there. But over time, these little drops of water, these little gusts of wind add up and they do create this sense of erosion. Another analogy, which is actually what the ultra I will mention in today's podcast, is the idea of a, a curtain that obstructs sunlight. So imagine that you have a room that is like there's a huge window. Let's say like one whole wall of the room is uh, is totally clear, like it's just made of glass. So a lot of sunlight comes in. Now imagine if you were to take like an opaque curtain and you were to just cover, put it on that window. So obviously that would obscure any sunlight from coming in. Let's say sometimes you see this at hotels. Sometimes they have these like really, really thick opaque curtains that really remove any kind of sunlight. Versus let's say if you had like a very sheer curtain, that obviously would not really conceal the sunlight from coming in, right? However, imagine that you had a very sheer curtain that really barely concealed any light at all, if any. And then imagine you put another sheer curtain on top of that and another sheer curtain on top of that and another one and another one. Eventually, if you put enough of these sheer curtains, one on top of the other, it would have the same effect as that opaque curtain. So that's really how it works in terms of us and these transgressions that we do against God. Another way to think about it is if you go back to that podcast episode where we talked about how our vitality, our life force can really be likened to a rope that is sort of like a a, a rope made out of breath because God's constantly breathing life into us. And if we think about this rope that connects us with our source and God, it's, we can think of it as being made up of 613 strands with which each one of the 613 strands corresponding to one mitzvah. And that every time we, God forbid, transgress one of the commandments, even in a very small way, then this cuts off one of the strands on a very small scale. And of course, you know, if we think about like the details, there's so many details of the mitzvahs and things like that. So if we just transgress like a very, very minor form of a transgression, it's going to only split it like a hairbreadth of a way, like only like a teeny little bit. But imagine if you keep doing that. Imagine if you keep, keep engaging in these minor little teensy little 
white light kind of like transgression. So what kind of things could this fall, could fall into the category, this type of category? So the ultra rabbi actually gives us some examples in today's section. He says, for example, ignoring the needy. So let's say some, someone comes up to you and asks for tzedakah and you just totally ignore them. You don't, you don't talk to them. You pretend that they're not there. That would fall into that category. Or imagine, for example, uh, so you get anger. You're quick to anger. Imagine you have a problem with arrogance. Imagine you behave in a way that's very arrogant. You might think to yourself, really, anger, arrogance? Like these are things that could really sever your connection to God in such an extreme way? So the answer is yes. If you engage in it too many times, or even the smallest amount of time, any little time that we do any of these things, we are severing, God forbid, our connection with our source on some scale. So that's really something to keep in mind. So today, speaking of sobriety, which was the subject of yesterday about all about being sober, today is really this recognition that we should, none of us should feel holier than thou. None of us should feel self-righteous because if any of us feel like this doesn't apply to us, these discussions that we've been having because we're not full-fledged addicts, we're not doing any major sins on a daily basis, it does apply to you because none of us are perfect and we're all human. And even these small little things add up and can really have an effect uh, in terms of um, disconnecting us from our source. So let's get into the text and see how the Alter Rebbe explains all of this. And we'll see that the Alter Rebbe is actually going to get very specific in terms of different types of sins and how sins can actually, uh, different types of transgressions can actually affect the source in very particular ways. Because remember, we learned that our source, we want to break it down. When we say God, we can think of it as the Tetragrammaton, the yod ke vav ke. So the Alter Rebbe is really going to explain to us, us how each one of the four letter the four letters of that name is affected through our transgressions. So here we go. So and for context, we are in Yarsachuva at the end of the this is the final part of chapter seven. And so the altar of it begins here. And then he says, even a person who didn't do something which makes them liable, didn't commit a transgression that makes them liable for excision or for uh, death by the hands of heaven, which is, for example, uh, something like a uh, wasteful seed emission, like that type of thing, like we spoke about before, that wasting seed is something that would cu- uh, that would uh, make a person liable for death by the hand of heaven. So let's say a person doesn't engage in this. They don't do any of these really severe sins. So rather, they just are engaged sometimes in much more minor sins and much less severe sins. Nevertheless, since these minor sins cause a blemish in the soul and in the godly soul, that, for example, as in the analogy that we discussed earlier about the rope and about these little strands of the rope, which we mentioned earlier, then when a person does this many times, multiple times, then it can be, it can, it can add up to as if they did one big time, which does make a person liable for excision or for death. And even if a person does uh, one sin, let's say it's not like they do a bunch of little sins, but they just do one little sin, but they do that one little sin many times. So we see here, and now the altar is going to bring a verse from Yeshayahu, chapter 44, verse 22, where we see that the the uh, that this prophet, Yeshayahu, he likens sins to a cloud that uh, obscures sunlight. So in Yeshayahu, in, in that place in Yeshayahu, chapter 44, Verse 22, it says, Machiti ka'av pish'echa, which literally means, I erased your transgressions like a cloud, like a very thick cloud. So meaning to say, so it's, it's a reference to sins being like a cloud. And this is a reference to very severe sins that really separate a person from the innermost part of the name of Havaya, of the Tetragrammaton, blessed be he, and the divine soul. So... Uh, so this is like, so basically it's like if a person engages in a very severe sin, what they're doing is they're create, they're making a barrier to this flow of energy coming from the yud Vavke and from the nefesh al A so person's like obscuring the vitality they can receive this from this way. Just like a very thick cloud that's very dark separates fr- the sun from the earth and for the people that are below it for example. So it's like, imagine, let's say it's a really, really cloudy day. If it gets cloudy enough, it like, it doesn't even look so light outside anymore. It's really obscuring the sun. 
And then the verse in Yeshayahu continues and it goes on and it says, that your sins are like a cloud. And this is a reference to even those very, very minor sins, like those things that a person, it's the Hebrew expression is, dash which literally means a man tramples under his heel, meaning to say that we a person just kind of does them, like by the way, it's not, they don't even think about them. They don't even realize that they're, they're doing a sin. Maybe we can think of Lashon Hara as kind of falling into that category, right? Like people just like gossip all the time. It's normal. It's whatever. It's actually a sin, believe it or not. So um, these sins obscure just like a very thin cloud would would obscure. So imagine, let's say if you had a very, very thin cloud that would obscure the sun. But if you had like a bunch of these thin clouds, it would obscure the sun for real, right? And then uh, just like this analogy, the ultra is going to bring another analogy, is that let's say if a person puts in a room the light of a, a, a uh, against the sunlight. So let's say they're in a room that is getting a lot of sunlight in it and they put on the window many flimsy cur- curtains, many very like sheer curtains. Um, if they put a bunch of them, it's going to darken the room just as much as one really thick and opaque curtain would, would do right? And so this is exactly how we need to think about it when we think about the analog, when we think about what that which we are talk- talking about for real. That anytime a person acts in, does these minor transgressions, like does these these transgressions that they don't, they barely even think about. They just like kind of do them as a by the way thing. Enough of these are going to add up. They're going to cause this obstruction in the same way that one big sin would do. And while this is true of all sins, of all kind of minor sins, then the altar says that he, he's going to put us in a special focus. He says, certainly, in Hebrew, there are certain sins which are notorious. There are certain sins that the sages really specified, and they said that they are like these uh, three cardinal sins, the three sins that make a person liable for death. So what what is this? What are, What is this a reference to? So we know that, that there's idolatry, right? Uh, adultery and murder. In Hebrew, avodah zara, kiloyarayot, and shvichot amim. So what is this like? So for example, we know that like ignoring the needy, like neglecting to give tzedakah, in other words, right? Uh, as it says, and this is from Devarim chapter 15, verse 9, where it says, which means be, beware, lest there be in your heart something unworthy. So, and, and then the altar explains this, that this word, which, which here we're saying is unworthy, is actually a, a, a reference to idolatry. So, meaning to say that this ignoring the needy, there's a, there's a, a parallel here to ignoring the needy, ignore, neglecting to give staka is likened to idolatry. And also, saying Lashon Hara, like gossiping about a person, this is also like a Vodazara, and it's also like uh, adultery, and it's also like murder. So so Lashon Hara, in other words, is is, the, is really bad, because Lashon Hara is likened to all three of them. It's likened to Avodah Zara, it's likened to adultery, and it's likened to murder. So that's really something to keep in mind. And then th- we see that, some, that also uh, somebody who gets angry is likened to somebody who serves idols and also somebody who is arrogant is likened to somebody who serves idols as is outlined in in the Gemara so this is a bigger discussion maybe for another time as to why all these things fall under the category of being likened to idolatry but maybe just one simple one quick thing that I'll say about this is that basically what's happening whenever a person gets angry or whenever a person's getting arrogant is they're basically giving too much power to something other than God so if a person gets angry, why is a person angry at another person? It's because they feel that that person harmed them. When really, ultimately, nobody can harm them except for God. Nobody has any power over you except for God. So that means they're giving this person power as if that person's God. And if a person is arrogant, they're giving themselves that power. They're saying that they are the ones that have that power. So that is also like they're likening themselves in that case to God. So that's why anger and arrogance can all fall into this category of being likened to idolatry. And the biggest example of this says the ultra and he says that this is equal to all of them, the which transgression is equal to all of these little kind of transgressions is the transgression of neglecting to study Torah, believe it or not. 
So where does he get this from? So he says that this is actually, we find this in the Gemara, in the Jerusalem Talmud, in the Talmud Yerushalmi, in Chagiga 1.7, where it says, So it's that is speaking about how Hashem overlooks idolatry, he overlooked uh, adultery, he overlooked murder, but does not overlook the sin of neglecting to study Torah. So we know that there's this idea of studying Torah, which a man, a Jewish man, is it's incumbent upon them to study Torah at any, any moment that they have that they have free, any moment, not to waste time, but instead to study Torah. So if somebody neglects to do this, says the ultra bet, this is something that Hashem does not overlook. It's something that Hashem notices. And this is why we see that actually when we read the Shema, at uh, the nighttime Shema, and maybe you'll notice it this time tonight when you say your Shema, part of the nighttime Shema that we say, like the whole course there there's the shema but then there's a bunch of brachos and there's a bunch of other things that we say so part of it is that we accept upon ourselves the four types of death by the hands of the court etc so it's basically an acknowledgement of the fact that we probably did engage in some kind of serious transgression even if we didn't like outright do any of the cardinal sins you know and then the altar goes on and he says all of this is aside from the fact that according to the kabbalah Anybody who blemishes the letter Yud from the name Yud Kevav taken by special Grammaton, it's as if they are liable for stoning, for being palted to death by stone, skila in Hebrew. And anybody who blemishes the letter He of the Yud Kevav Hey, it's as if they are liable for being burnt to death, Slecha, called in Hebrew. And the Vav, as if they are liable for being killed by the hand of the sword, Hevez in Hebrew. And if a person blemishes this last hay of the tetragrammaton, it's as if they are um, liable for death by strangulation, by chenek in Hebrew. So, and if you recall, it says this whole thing of like, anytime you do anything that is against Hashem, that goes against the will of God, we're causing a blemish in Hashem's name, God forbid, on some level. So that's, uh, so that's something to keep in mind as well, that it's like, you know, each one of these blemishes really are, according to Kabbalah, they do incur the death penalty according to one of these four types of death penalties. And so what is this, how do we, what does this like practically mean? So the altar of really makes it very specific. He says that somebody who neglects to, is neglectful in saying Shema, this is an example of somebody who is blemishing the Yud of the Yud Kebab thing which again, remember, was makes a person liable for stoning, being stoned to death. Um, somebody who blemishes, who is neglectful in terms of tefillin, neglecting to put on tefillin, this makes, this is an example of somebody who blemishes the hay, the first hay, which is makes somebody liable for burning, being burnt to death, remember? And somebody who is neglectful in tzitzis, in wearing tzitzis on some level, then this makes them, uh, this causes a blemish in the letter vav, which again, the Vav corresponded to death by the hand of the sword. And a person who is neglectful in terms of prayer, this causes them to blemish this final hay, which again is makes a person liable and it's connected with the with being killed by strangulation. So it's pretty intense stuff here. And then the Altar Rebbe concludes and he says, from all of this, a person, like a thinking person, can learn from all the other like types of sins, basically, like like if you if you think about it enough, basically what Alter was saying, you can kind of figure it out, like what other sins correspond to what, basically, and kind of like the severity of how every little sin is so severe, and how neglecting, to, uh, being neglectful in Torah study is over and above all the others. It's like equal in weight to all the others. So that's it for this section today, and it's pretty intense. So it's like this is sort of like the Alter Rebbe just kind of like reminding us that the little things matter. We might think that. Uh, you know, I'm basically a good person. Sure, here and there I do things that maybe are not 100% the right thing, but like I don't kill anybody, God forbid. I don't, you know, do anything major. I never cheated on anyone. I didn't cheat on my wife. I didn't cheat on my husband. Um, I'm not engaged in any illicit relationships or anything like that. Uh, I haven't ever worshipped an idol outright. Like I never bow down. I don't have an idol in my home. So I don't really have to worry about the ultra, but the message of today's um section is not so fast and really realize that your actions even if they're small in number really do add up and they really do they they all are kind of like connected back to their source so something to keep in mind not you know i don't know if the purpose of this podcast is to freak you guys out too much but i think it is really just 
to help you live a, a more mindful life and to become more aware of the consequences of your actions and to live more in line with your creator as best as you can. Uh, and if, of course, uh, being human means we make, make mistakes and it's not something to get dis depressed about or down about because this whole section is, again, called Yerat Shuva. It's all about how to return from the fall. So there's always a chance for redemption. There's always ways that we can improve and that we can rectify the past. So that's it for today, and we'll continue with a new chapter tomorrow, and I'll speak to you then. Thanks for listening to the It Is Top podcast, hosted by Sarit Switzer. This podcast is dedicated in loving memory of my maternal grandfather, Avraham Yitzchak ben Binyamin Cohen of Blessed Memory. Music by Shoshana. If you enjoyed this episode and would like to support the show, please share it with others and subscribe on YouTube, Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And make sure to leave us a five-star review. To find out more about the It Is Top project, including more information on my soon-to-be-published book, please visit our website, itistaught.com. To catch the latest from me, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Looking forward to speaking with you tomorrow, and until then, have a great day.